Did you know these guys kidnap, murder, and eat baby ants? Neither did I until I caught these guys in action. Come along on this adventure into the grim world of thief ants. And for you that has planned to keep baby killers, this is the video for you. Well, well, I'm back, back again with another species tutorial. This time we're taking a deep look into the lives of the thief ants, scientifically called Solenopsis fugax. But before we start with their biology, I want to mention that some footage might be kind of shaky. It was impossible to fix with stabilizers. Forgetting that, I think that this is awesome, as we have the nice overview of the thief ant nests just beside another nest. A deep look into how they kidnap, kill and eat baby ants. But before that crap of science fiction cruelty, we dive into their biology. These very small yellow ants are dispersed all over Europe and are spreading all the way to Central Asia. They are primarily carnivorous but they can also tend aphids for secretion, as the black garden ant in this video. But their main diet is pretty peculiar, as you may have guessed. I will for now tell you that you can almost always find these guys beside another ant nest. Back to that later. So, as you can see, there's the colony of thief ants here, with loads of eggs and elites. Elites, for you that doesn't know, are the reproductive members of the colony. Worker ants can't reproduce or lay any eggs for that matter. The only individual in all ant colonies that can lay eggs is the queen. The queen is first born as a princess in the nest. She has wings and isn't mated yet, therefore can't lay fertile eggs. Only a mature colony that has the resources can produce both princesses and princes as well. These two different ant reproductives are also called female and male elites. A big mature colony can raise thousands of reproductives. Then, at one time of the year, all nests of one species in a considerable area releases their elites. Male and females from different colonies mate in the sky. This is called the nuptial flight. So after the ant time, the males dies off and the females, or the princesses, eventually land and break off their wings. This is when you can catch them wandering around on the ground. If not caught or killed, the queens now raises their own colonies and then gain the title as a queen ant. So there you know how ants reproduce and how a new nest occurs. But now back to the thief ant story. So I now see this quite big thief ant colony. They have big chambers and quite big tunnels between each chamber. But what I notice is this small tunnel network reaching out from the nest that was also quite trafficated as well. And all these very tiny tunnels all led to one territory. The neighboring Lassius colony. Oh my god. Men, women and children, I have now recorded for you the very specialized biology of the thief ants. Awesome! So, what is happening? You can just see how they have infiltrated themselves all around the laziest nest. And this is because of one ingenious but cruel way of nourishing themselves. I will present it to you by this short yet informational video. First, the founding queen starts a new colony near a colony of a different species. Second, she raises it and very very tiny workers are close. Then they move closer. Third, eventually they dig tiny tunnels into the neighboring colony. The tunnels are so tight only the tiny Solenopsis workers fit in them. Fourth, action. 
Solenopsis workers venture into the colony and steals their eggs. The ants from the other colony aren't even aware of it. Fifth, the colony can without any problem feast on their daily supply of fresh ant eggs. Wow! So these small ants were actually stealing the children from the other ant colony to later eat them. This is so sad yet so fascinating. Such a cool natural specialization from these guys. But now, let's move on on how to keep these guys. So first you can catch a queen of this species during September or around. I have a video of all nuptial flight schedules of all species in Europe. Click the annotation above to see. Caught, the queen simply needs a test tube setup. This is a video from Safeway Ants. Please follow him as well, as we are going to cooperate. We are both going to be making a playlist that will add as many tutorials on how to keep one specific genus or species as we can. For you guys to better know and enjoy whatever species you have caught. More about that coming later. So, let's go back to your beloved thief ant queen. These queens are claustral and need no food during the colony family, so don't mind feeding her until her first workers. This species is also polygynous, therefore you can add as many queens as you want together for them to collaborate in that test tube. Eventually, when the colony grows, you will need a new setup for them. They are quite acceptable, but their preferences are small chambers and tight tunnels with a lot of humidity. Don't forget to have a great escape prevention, as they are both small and very capable of escaping many different deterrents. Feeding them, you can use honey dropped in cotton, as they drown in normal honey drops because of their miniature size. I do this with my Thanatorex colony and it works just fine. Then give them a lot of insects as they really, really enjoy flesh. If you are overthinking giving them eggs, don't do it. They don't require it and only do it in nature because of the harsh food competition. You can try once, maybe just once for educational purpose, but no more. As much as it is fascinating to observe, it's cruel as well. And that's about it guys. Please do not forget to like and subscribe as I'm in my next video introducing these guys into my big complex vivarium. That update will be huge as everything has settled and nature is about to create its balance. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you on the next one. Please subscribe or I will get my thief ants on you. No, just kidding, but please do.